let me say first off that this is a, a court of inquiry. It's not an adversarial court. It's a nonprofit educational event. And with enormous, enormous energy and intelligence, all of us have been brought together to try to bring out some of the aspects. Uh, so if I may, I, I have prepared an overview statement based on my work these many past weeks. And I want to just say that as a parent and as a patriot, I'm absolutely outraged by what we're allowing to happen to our children. Uh, this, I mean, humanity is judged on how you treat the weakest member uh, of, the, um, of the society. Let me say that although pedophilia, which says child love, has nothing to do with the abuse of children, uh, these children are not just kidnapped and in some cases bred by families as a cash crop. We have people in the United States of America that breed children in order to sell them. Mm -hmm. And when they are sold, they come without birth certificates, which means it's easier to kill them and have no one ask where they are. We're also importing children by the plane load. Again, children who have no documentation. It's not just child slavery or child sex abuse. It's also child torture because you have adrenalized blood. You, you have the, the whole blood drinking ceremony of the satanic world. It's also the uh, use of children for harvesting body organs. We'll have the Falun Gong uh, testimony tomorrow. Um, one of the reasons that the Falun Gong are so popular is because they're so healthy, uh, so that you can harvest their body organs uh, with, and, get, and get the very best. And then you have ritual ceremonies and ritual murder uh, as well as incidental murder. Uh, I, um, I have been a spy. I'm out from undercover. I'm under a lifetime secrecy agreement. I absolutely uh, tell you without doubt, I have no secrets that I can remember. Uh, so uh, if when I go to Iran soon, they can torture me. There's nothing there <laughs> for them to get. Um, but I know the system. I've been a spy all over the world. I have uh, created the Marine Corps Intelligence Command. Uh, I have trained um, intelligence and law enforcement representatives, over 8,000 of them from across 66 countries. They are all, without exception, good people trapped in a bad system. And one of the most wonderful things that this court could achieve, now that we've had Pizzagate, for example, which opened people's mind, is we could achieve a, an opening of the public mind and an absolute imperative from the public to governments, including the U.S. government, which I think is the center of gravity in, in so many ways. I have found in my research and preparation for this court and all of the work that will follow that most organizations that end up being um, used to prey on children, Oxfam is a recent example, uh, all of the United Nations organizations, the Boy Scouts of America, all of the child services agencies across the United States of America, they did not start out as organizations to prey on children. But they attract pedophiles. And ultimately, pedophiles end up rising in the ranks and controlling those organizations. So that an organization that initially started out in the service of children becomes an organization that is in fact hunting children. And one of our distinguished commissioners has written an absolutely wonderful book called Child Hunters, which I recommend to all of you um, as a brief on this. Governments are letting us all down. And I absolutely agree with the commissioner who brings forward the need to uh, restore the sovereignty of we the people because governments have become not only bureaucratized, but they are now the servants of the deep state, of the banks. And if I may, the deep state is not the same as the shadow government. As I say, every organization is 90% good people trapped in a bad system. It's the highest 10% that is generally the rogue killer element. Um, the shadow government is generally politicians. I won't speak to England, but in the United States of America, we have a two-party tyranny, which disenfranchises 70% of the public. And so they run this chimera of an election process. One of the problems with computers is they're too easily manipulated. In the United States of America, elections are decided before the first vote is cast. 
the electronic voting machines are essentially fraudulent machines, just as computers can record a fraudulent judgment that sticks with you uh, forever or make a child vanish. I am concerned because most of these organizations dealing with children don't have counterintelligence protection. They're not vetting the people that are moving up in the ranks. And the government is allowing that to happen. So what you have essentially is these, the pedophiles generally appear to be the most wonderful, sociable people. You know, let Sally sit on Uncle John's lap uh, because he's such a loving uncle. Unbeknownst to people, Uncle John is actually a predator. Uh, we're not doing the counterintelligence at the local level, the province level, or the national level. Uh, it's absolutely essential that we begin to talk about this openly and while we are not a law enforcement commission, we can, in fact, turn information over to law enforcement. And I believe we will render a signal service to the people of Great Britain and to other countries by being a magnet for information. Um, it's been my experience that when you put out one piece of free information, it attracts 100 pieces of information from others, of which 10 are priceless. So there's a 10 to 1 return on investment. And this commission seeks to create an online library and some other things that I'll talk about in a moment. And I believe we will serve as a magnet, a hub, a catalyst for a new emerging global consciousness about pedophilia and all of its uh, aspects. There is great cause for alarm. There are two great causes for alarm uh, beyond the actual fact of pedophilia and its existence, which as uh, his grace has pointed out, has gone on for centuries. First, the elite appear to be seeking to infect local and provincial law enforcement officers with a taste for pedophilia. There appears to be a very deliberate attempt to push this interest in pedophile movies, including movies that include bestiality. I'm very concerned because we're seeing some snuff movies now and we're seeing some movies in which military war dogs are raping children, including toddlers. And these movies may have come out of the American occupation of Afghanistan and the boredom of U.S. Army and Marine Corps troops, where in Afghanistan, pedophilia is common. It's a standard practice at the village level. Uh, but military war dogs plus common pedophilia and video cameras, which every U.S. soldier and Marine has, is a very, very toxic combination. And I'm seeing direct evidence that that is one of the most horrible things that's come out of Afghanistan uh, in, recent, um, in recent years. Now, let me also tell you that we have, um, we have a second concern. And the witness has really most magnificently outlined um, asset stripping. The core message from this asset stripping is that the same machine that strips children from families strips wealth from those who are being preyed upon. Not just whistleblowers, but as we'll hear on Wednesday, husbands stupid enough to try and hide their money by moving it offshore so that they don't have to share with their wife. What husbands do when they turn over their money to intermediaries who are part of this system is mark themselves as a target. They might as well paint a target on their forehead because they have now become prey for a system that recognizes people who uh, are asking to be made destitute. Now, it's my, not my working assumption, but uh, the, the working assumption yet to be proven that the totality of the children disappearing worldwide is toward 8 million people, toward 8 million children. In the United States of America, the acknowledged number, not counting the children being bred without birth certificates, not counting the children being imported without documentation, is between 600 and 800,000 a year. Now imagine Africa and East Asia and all these other locations. I personally believe that the number we want to try to document is rising well beyond the official figures and we, will, we have yet to learn what the actual number is, okay? The other working assumption is how long do these children survive within this system? What I am hearing from the witnesses that I've talked to is two years. It may be longer. 
It may be four years, it may be six years, but by and large, these children are so abused. I mean, we're talking rapes by the hour and so forth, that they reach their expiration date uh, within two years. And then they're murdered with impunity or they're ritually murdered if that's what they've been bred for. So I think we need to document this. No one else has done this before in a systematic manner. This commission is rendering a signal service by seeking to do an overall view in the public interest. Um, this will be a massive, massive undertaking. And while the preliminary attempt is to do a six month to nine month uh, endeavor, uh, subject to funding availability and um, the availability of witnesses and also prisoners. There are a number of prisoners who can be debriefed, who when properly debriefed by specialists can really give a deeper understanding that has not been achieved by existing law enforcement and other agencies because they simply treat these people when they catch them, in those rare instances when they catch them, as disposable goods to be thrown into prison and, and forgotten about. And tomorrow we will have some expert testimony from one of our commissioners who can speak to this far, far uh, better than I. William Binney is my counterpart. He is for NSA what I am to CIA, which is to say he is saying, as I am saying, that we can delete 70% of our respective organizations and put the other 30% to work. But Binney is also the author of Thin Thread, which is a way of doing deep discovery in unstructured databases and the internet. And so he is prepared to actually help us do pedophilia tracking worldwide. And one of the things that the other technical commission, Stephen Arnold is very good at, is de-anonymizing the internet. This includes every image having a fingerprint. So you can take a, a, an image of a child being uh, abused and you can track that image. Uh, through the, the dark web. So there are resources that we can bring to bear in support of this commission's mission. My favorite technical commission is Arno Reuser from the Netherlands, who is a master librarian. He is so good that when the Dutch intelligence community realized it didn't know enough about the world, they recruited him to create the Open Source Intelligence Center for Dutch Intelligence. And as with the endeavors that I helped create in the United States, and in fact for Scotland Yard, very quickly people found out that they could get 40 to 60% of what they knew very cheaply using open sources of information. That's not what government intelligence agencies do today. They want to spend as much money as possible in the riskiest way possible on the most expensive way possible. They're not actually there to do decision support or answer uh, questions. So I believe that Arno Reuser is capable of creating the world's first digital library on pedophilia. And this would be a multilingual library to include local dialects. And it would be a library that would then end up being what we call a magnet for walk-ins. We want to have a very professional ingestion system so that people can volunteer to provide expert witness to the thing, or they can volunteer to offer up their papers. There are a number of pedophiles now who are actually ready to turn over their, their diaries. All right, so I think we're actually doing something, something really, really huge. My final uh, comment. The center of gravity for taking down the deep state. Pedophilia is both the induction glue. Pedophilia is how the deep state recruits and controls people. Uh, it is also the Achilles heel of the deep state. I believe that once the public realizes that the government is not protecting their children at a scale of vulnerability that we can articulate, then everything else about the government is called into question. All right. So for me, this is a truly righteous endeavor. And I will end by saying that as much good as it might do to get the British angry, for me, the center of gravity for change is the American public. Because if you can get the American public angry, we will stop supporting dictators overseas. We will close all of our military bases overseas. I am on record as a former CIA uh, operations officer is saying that our thousand bases overseas are not there for national defense. They're there to serve as lily pads for the smuggling of guns, gold, cash, drugs, and small children. 
So let me say I am proud to be in your company, and I believe that no matter what we do or do not do, it is going to make a difference. God bless you all. We are the power behind the ITNJ. Add your voice. Sign the treaty.